going back a long time, uh, 2014, uh, Joseph starts Punch TV. It's going to be a company designed to create content for diverse urban audiences, television, movies. Uh, and fortunately, as you were doing that, Joseph, uh, the Jobs Act was coming uh, to fruition, which is, uh, you know, I think we all applauded that as a way to get more uh, capital available to entrepreneurs and, and open up the capital markets to everyday investors. Um, SEC took a little while to promulgate rules that were that came out of the Jobs Act, but they did that in 2015 or so. And then in 2016, uh, Punch TV was actually one of the first, I haven't confirmed yet whether it was the first, but it was certainly an early, uh, what was called Adopt. the Reggae Plus adopter. Yeah, and, and the Reggae Plus offering was uh, approved by the SEC in 2016. Um, now I'm gonna skip over a whole bunch of stuff. We don't wanna talk about the litigation per se, but let's just, I'll, I'll abbreviate it to say, there was an issue with uh, Punch TV CPA that turned out not to be a CPA. Uh, Punch TV informed the SEC. I'm going to again leave out a lot of detail here on purpose, but there was a suspension order. And then in 2021, the SEC filed a complaint in federal court in Los Angeles. And that's the case we're going to talk about today. We'll, we'll leave the, the courtroom fight to the courtroom and just talk about the case at a high level. Um, Punch TV and Mr. Collins engaged counsel. Uh, went through the painful and expensive process of uh, litigating with the SEC for some time. And then in 20, yeah, yeah, that's right. And then in 2023, uh, Punch TV exhausted its resources that were available to pay counsel. And unfortunately, as is too common in SEE cases, counsel had to withdraw. Um, and so for a period there, Punch TV and you, Joseph, were not represented by counsel. Um, I don't want to comment on the timing here, but the SEC during that time period, while counsel was withdrawing, filed a massive motion for summary adjudication, uh, seeking to have the judge in an order saying that the law had been broken. I will say this, uh, can't say this often enough, the SEC has never alleged in this case or anywhere else that either you or Punch TV committed fraud, harmed investors, misused investor funds. This whole case has to do with whether the offerings of securities were properly registered or exempt from registration under a variety of, even as a securities law practitioner, I'll say pretty complex uh, exemptions. So that, that's the issue. It's not an issue of fraud or investor harm or anything like that. So there you were in, in uh, 2023, your counsel's withdrawing, the SEC's filing motions. You're doing your best to show up in court and, and argue your case, but of course, corporations cannot proceed in a case without counsel. That's correct. And so at some point in late 2023, the judge said, you need to get counsel for Punch TV, Mr. Collins. SEC files its uh, what they hoped to be the final motion in the case, asking the judge to impose $1.6 million, actually over $1.6 million in disgorgement penalties and interest. Uh, and I think it was in, you correct me if I'm wrong, but middle of December 2023, so just a couple of months ago, the judge said, if counsel doesn't make an appearance for the defendants in this case, I'm just going to take the hearing off calendar and rule on the SEC's motion based only on the SEC's motion. Correct. We fortunately got in touch with each other uh, and talked about um, this case, and um, I'm going to turn to Ed here in a minute, but ICANN and Baker McKenzie stepped in, I think it was on December 29th, made an appearance, and are now engaged in the litigation. So I think that kind of brings us up to date. Ed, maybe you can tell us a little bit, you know, here you are, it's December, <laughs> we're getting close to the holidays. Uh, you uh, are certainly a busy uh, litigator at Baker McKenzie. What were some of the things that drew you and uh, into this case and uh, you know you and, and your firm to become pro bono co-counsel on this? Yeah, well, Nick, when you reached out to me and you know, right for the holidays, I think of uh, uh, last year, um, explained to me that, that uh, Mr. Collins and his company really just had a technical violation of uh, registration requirements, and but the uh, counsel at uh, I guess. Uh, disengaged from him. They didn't have money to pay new counsel and the SEC was pulling the, or throwing the full force and weight of the U.S. government against him. I really just thought that he deserved, uh, you know, proper legal representation. And I was able to talk to my firm uh, and get get it approved. And um, 
happy to be working with you and hopefully uh, we get a, a good result from Mr. Collins. Tell us, uh, Joseph, what was it like um, sort of living through and trying to operate a business, Punch TV, during the SEC investigation and litigation? What was the impact like? Well, for me, um, I thought the SEC was there to help, especially with a new program, with something that had never been done. And there was no infrastructure in place for that program. I mean, literally, they were making this stuff up as they would go. So just because you've got to think this is the early stages of crowdfunding. And this is the government saying, hey, we want to be part of the early stages of crowdfunding. And <clears throat> we want to help entrepreneurs do this. And early on, that was on their website. It was this glaring thing, you know, hey, we're going to, we want to help champion you to be, you know, successful. And um, in our case, we were among the first to uh, to file. And, and after, I don't know, it took seven or eight months to actually get, to actually get approved. But one of the things that happens specifically, which I learned in, in, in urban areas, is the access to the resources in terms of accounting. That's where our problems initially had started. And we're the ones that informed the SEC of our issues. And, um, you know, no good, no, no good deed goes unpunished. <laughs> right. So the impact you know, has been tremendous. I mean, through this process and, and working and being part of this, which I thought you have to build attorney fees right into this thing, because it never occurred to me that the SEC was be going to become adversarial and became adversarial very quickly into this particular process and held this, our tiny little company to the same standards that you would held a major corporation. And there, to me, there's something fundamentally wrong with that. And their impact in, was a tremendous hurt um, on our company. It was tremendously hurt, especially when they initially came out and, and, and called me a recidivist. To me, that's like a real major problem when I've absolutely have no criminal background or nothing. I mean, I barely get parking tickets most, <laughs> you know, so to, to have this and then the subpoena power of the SEC, the SEC really used subpoena to scare the living bejesus out of people. They used the, 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 um, the subpoena power to scare our banks. And so because um, we had so many small transactions, you know, it, the bank thought that we were definitely running something that was nefarious and so that to us was just wow that was such a, a kick in the teeth and at every turn because we were building services the subpoena power of the sec collapsed these services that didn't exist now so now you're out trying to find other money sources because of sub subpoena power that the sec used against our company. And I think that that's something that's very unfair. I think it's very, 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 very unfair. And I don't think that it should have been done that way. I think that with them developing this new thing, which I believed at the time would have helped a lot of small companies, right, who did not have to find investment bankers, because the idea is when you want to finance something and you want to do it through securities, you have to use an investment banker most of the time. So this was an opportunity for you to kind of escape the clause of the investment banker who would never work with you anyway because the deal structures are too small. Investment bankers, they want deals that are 50 million, 100 million, 200 million before they would even talk to you. And then you've got to be able to pay their fees up front in, in a lot of cases, along with the accounting fees and the attorney fees to, to do that. So this I thought was a really good opportunity for specifically in, in the urban community specifically to, to really make a difference and to really you know, show our community, hey, you know what? We can create wealth from the ground up just like any other community can. Um, the, the access to the tools that it takes to get there is almost prohibitive without a reg A type situation. And that's why we were excited about it initially. Personally, this thing has been 
devastating to me personally. Litigation is terrible. The um, yeah, when you talk about an attorney, uh, and you're talking about attorneys that cost five hundred dollars an hour, right, on a typical basis, and that's a decent attorney. Like they feel you're underpaying them, even if you're paying them five hundred an hour, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, you guys are attorneys, so you guys know, right? So you're, you know, it, it, just the litigation process, and you know, I don't know if I could say this or not, but I'm going to. I've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars in litigation for something that I 100% would have avoided in in any kind of way. So I, I am so thankful that the I can family of attorneys came in to to help us, you know, at the last minute. I am so thankful for that. This is like a for me, it's like a godsend because I've had the weight of the world on me. Uh, okay. well, Joseph, that is an incredible story. I'm glad you persevered. I'm glad we're able to help. And you know, we don't know how the litigation will turn out. Can't ever make, you know, hundred percent predictable. We hope for the best.